first question about uh, three most important reforms that you think are vital for Ukraine and are urgent for Ukraine. Uh -huh. Uh, at the beginning, maybe I would, I, I would say generally that the reforms should be comprehensive. It is quite difficult uh, to believe that uh, three, four, five reforms, and it is enough. This is a scale, a puzzle, and this puzzle should be completed. But I love to stick to the question, usually. So if I should pick uh, three of them, uh, reflecting the present time, of Ukraine, I would say that the, you need macroeconomic stabilization and fiscal consoli consolidation in the moment. Because everybody knows what is your uh, financial situation, what is the situation of your banking system. I speak about the state budget deficit, about your interest rates, which are very high, and many other difficulties. The low level of foreign exchange, for instance. So macroeconomic stabilization and fiscal consolidation. The second uh, biggest issue by my mind is decentralization. I believe that uh, you need to make your uh, administration more powerful, more effective. I believe that our experience to decentralize power to municipalities, to regions, is a fantastic experience. One would never uh, say that uh, our mayors or governors are so capable to manage many things for people. So I'm a strong advocate of decentralization and public um, reform restructuring. And the last one is uh, the need to create friendly business environment. Because you know, also, coming from my own experience, all industries are dying and new ones should be born because the world is changing and this is, it is impossible to stay on the same place. What experience of Slovakia can be the most useful for Ukraine and are also there some mistakes to learn from? Well, I believe that the most valuable experience coming from our past promoting reforms is that there is no gain without pain but pain can bring a lot of good so this is our experience at the beginning the reforms are painful but if reforms are leading to the creation of new jobs to the better for people, uh, when the reforms uh, are leading to beat corruption, to make the everyday life of people uh, better, this pain has fantastic, I would say, sense. So this is my own experience from eight years of promoting reforms. Uh, look, uh, in 1998, we were confronted with our small Yanukovych, if I may, to be frank. So, and the country was economically ruined, politically isolated. Czech Republic, Hungary, Poland were already negotiating with the EU about their membership into the EU. Slovakia was excluded. Uh, but within a few years, it is possible to change the country. 20 years ago, Slovakia was a state power in producing uh, tanks and uh, we were very strong in the um, arm industry. But we produced no passenger car. Today, the situation is that there is no uh, military industry or defense industry or arm industry in Slovakia, but we are the state power in producing passenger cars in the world. We produce more than one billion cars per year. We produce Volkswagen, Peugeot Citroën, here and Hyundai, thanks to structural reforms. So this is the main message for the Ukrainian people, that uh, the reforms can bring fantastic and positive results. But these reforms should be promoted as soon as possible. 
and should be comprehensive. You were talking about pain that is unavoidable when you do reforms. What do you think about shock therapy? Do you think it can be a strategy for Ukraine? I tend very closely to answer yes, but being a little bit older and experienced, I would avoid a little bit so strong expressions, shock therapy. From one side, I have full understanding that we have to operate quickly, also my experience. But on the other side, people are worried if you are speaking about shock. So what is necessary, and by the way, what is my intention, or what was my motivation behind my decision to come to Kiev was to share my best experience. Yes, the reforms are painful. There is no gain without pain. But uh, it is not necessary to speak about the shock. What I prefer to use is to speak about, I would say, a right pace, not to be delayed, not to hesitate, just go ahead. But uh, among experts, it is quite uh, frequently used this uh, expression to promote not a gradual approach, rather shock, a shock therapy. If I should decide between these two approaches, uh, let's say gradual reforms or shock therapy, I would vote for 100% the second alternative because I have no information about the success of gradual approach in time of crisis. Slovakia was one of the most successful countries in Central Eastern Europe in attracting foreign direct investment in the 90s and the early 2000s, and especially, as you already mentioned, in the automotive sector. I was wondering what's the secret why Slovakia has become this uh, paradise for investors, mm -hmm. as it was called, and also how the automotive sector, why was this sector chosen, and also mm -hmm. this experience, how can it apply to Ukraine? What mm -hmm. sectors do you see most attractive for investors in Ukraine? Very logical question and fantastic one. The basis of our success was that we had been able to create business-friendly environment. Easy to say, more difficult to execute, to reach it. How it is possible? Well, I have three things. The first, flexible labor market. The second, motivating taxation system. And number three, to beat corruption. Uh, I am obliged maybe to go back to questions uh, because you raised the question what was the mistake in our reforms, or what should be done differently if I should repeat the story of Slovak reform. Judiciary. We did the mistake that we didn't push enough new people into this segment. Everything in Slovakia now is under public scrutiny. Politicians, companies, uh, the management of state enterprises, but there is one very huge, uh, I would say, area in which people are not under public scrutiny, judges. And unfortunately, many of them, I don't want to say that everybody, but many of them changed their will to be independent into the reality they, they are inactive or unpredictable. They decide the same case on Monday as A, but on Tuesday as B. This is not stability. So what you need to be able or to enjoy the interest of foreigners to come and to invest is flexible labor market. If there is a job, the entrepreneur should be allowed to invite people to work. If there is no job, it would be it should be easier than today it is to send people home for several days. The second, or maybe the most important issue is to adopt attractive, motivating taxation system. If you have very high income tax, it is not motivated. And last but not least, as I have already mentioned, uh, it is necessary to beat corruption, to fight against uh, crime, to introduce the country uh, which is stable, predictable, with uh, law enforcement in a high level, 
and uh, in which rule of law is, I would say, condizione sine qua non. What about sectors most attractive for investors in Slovakia? How did you choose those and in, in Ukraine? Yeah, yeah, it was the last part of your previous question. Maybe you will be disappointed if I will tell you that we did nothing to invite Hyundai, Kia, or Peugeot, Citroën, or US Steel, or Samsung. We did nothing. Only we created business-friendly environment. It is not the role of the Prime Minister, even the President, or Minister of Economy. This is the role of the capital. And these people, business people, will decide immediately. Everybody is asking, how is it possible that Slovakia is producing one million cars per capita today? Why? How is it possible? Who decided it? And maybe there are not many people believing that nobody, only the investors decided. And reputation. If the first is coming, very, very known and strong as Volkswagen, or you are still coming to Košice, then the reputation is working. If you have good reputation, the interest is rising. So this is the miracle of our reforms. If you create friendly space for people, if your country is stable, if there is no hesitation that we decided to become a, an EU member one day, if you have such good reputation that it is worth it to invest, people will decide in US, in the Netherlands, in Germany, in France to come and to invest. This is the substance. To create as good, as friendly rules as possible and then to stick to these rules. When you came to power in Slovakia, you replaced a nationalist uh, uh, politician, Vladimir Mečar, who was not very well received on the EU level. You already mentioned that he was your Yanukovych. How difficult was it to create a new system from scratch and how to overcome the opposition from the old elites who maybe don't want reform? Yeah, first of all, it was not easy to beat my predecessor. But uh, at, at the end of the day, it was more than obvious for me that only via reforms uh, we can organize something like a national survival. So it was in my head and I felt huge responsibility laying on my social uh, shoulders. So not being too long, I would tell you that what was substantial for Slovakia was a clear leadership. Nobody was happy with me. Nobody is happy in Slovakia even today with me. But there is no hesitation who was the leader of the reforms. So uh, you need three things to survive the country and to bring prosperity and stability. The first, the most important is to have a vision for the country. I had a vision. I had a vision to belong to the society of free people. I believe in freedom. But freedom, it means that you should be responsible as well. Freedom is fantastic value. I was a, a citizen of the second class in communist time in Slovakia because I didn't want to belong to the communist regime. After the revolution, it was a dream for me, being free. But again and again, being free, it means to be able to bear responsibility as well. I had a dream to bring Slovakia to the West. What does it mean that I am against Russia? I govern on Russian music, I love the Russian people, Russian culture and sport. But I wanted to belong to society of freedom and the future stability and prosperity. It was my vision. The second thing which is needed is concrete projects for taxation for labor code, for health care, for pension, for education, for research, development. You need good projects. And there is the, the, the last one, maybe the most important. If you have vision, if you have, you have good project, you need people who are able, willing and able to promote these ideas into or to realize this, this project into reality. In Ukraine, illustration is another hot topic. In Slovakia, as far as I know, 
unlike in Czech Republic, there was no illustration. Do you think this is a good thing? And whether it somehow kept the people from the previous elite in power who maybe are having some negative impact still? Look, in general, I would say it was one of our weaknesses that we hesitated. We, at the end of the day, we had something like a special legislation, but in reality it was too late with a very low positive impact. I am in favor in this, but attestation of illustration should not be uh, changed and taken as a revenge. This is the remark number one. And uh, the remark number two is that uh, illustration is promoted with a goodwill explaining people that it is only the possibility to invite new people into your ministries, into your judiciary system, into your foreign uh, policy service, into your embassies, diplomacy. It is only good for the country. You need just new blood. So in this case, if frustration doesn't mean a revenge, and uh, if this process is not bringing new hatred and new tension. In this case, I, I, I believe that it is possible to manage it, to manage it in this direction. In this case, I am in favor. And maybe this is one of areas in which Ukraine should not repeat our weakness. How important was the uh, European Union political conditionality and the prospect of EU membership for the success of Slovakia reforms and how important it is for Ukraine also to have this prospect, a clear, concrete prospect of the EU membership, in your opinion? Your questions are fantastic, very, very, very strongly focused on the, on the right target. Look, uh, it was incredibly important for Slovakia. Not completely, but very important. You know, someone is telling that it was the goal to join the EU. It is not completely true in my eyes. The goal was to modernize the country, to bring prosperity, to stabilize society, to promote rule of law and other values into the society. This was the goal. But EU membership and the way implementation of a key communautaire was a good mean, an instrument, how to run faster. And I believe that the ambition of Ukraine to belong to, to the EU can serve in the same direction. It can motivate people. Because look, I travel a lot for many years, and I know very well that there is no paradise in this planet, neither in the US, nor in Germany, nor in France. But there is no better alternative for my nation than to belong to the West or to European or NATO community. For 100%, there is no other or even better alternative. If you Ukrainians are of the same opinion, your aspirations to belong to the EU is a fantastic one. And it can, it can serve in the same sense as help us, the Slovaks, to go faster ahead. But it also must be a two-way road. And in case of Slovakia, there was the will of the European Union to accept it as a member country. We see no such will, no concrete you know, promise of membership perspective to Ukraine so far. How important is this goodwill on behalf of the EU for also for the success of Ukrainian reforms? It is incredibly, immensely important. You are right. You know, I had a feeling in my time when uh, we were isolated and we started negotiations about our EU membership two years behind the Czech Republic, Poland and Hungary. I was not sure whether we are able to catch up with the neighbors and to jump to the last wagon. Fortunately, we did for Croatia. Later on, it was even more difficult. And it is, uh, I, I have to admit, it is fair to say that uh, Europe is tired a little, a little bit. We have also our own difficulties. 
crisis in 2008 brought new tension inside of community. The, the example of Greece, Portugal, crisis in Spain, in Ireland, it is painful. It has been and still it is painful. And it is not easy, you know, to promote reforms in these countries, to stabilize the situation. So there is an expression, I believe that it is in French, as enlargement fatigue. So from one side, I can understand that Europe is tired. But from the other side, I am more than sure that we will be stronger with Ukraine. Your joining to the EU is a win-win strategy good for Ukraine, good for Europe. And this is the role of, allow me to say, new democracies, such as Slovakia, Poland, Czech Republic, Hungary, Estonia, Baltic states, to, to help Europe to overcome this fighting, this fighting. So, well, it is not easy, but I am pretty sure that if you are willing, but also able to meet criteria, you will be invited because we should be honest all the time and uh, EU membership this is not the question of will but also the question of ability to meet necessary and required criteria political ones and economic ones it was painful in Slovakia it is not easy to to implement a key common, order, common rules it is not easy to make economy competitive enough because when we open your border, competition is coming. It is not easy for your agricultural sector. It is not easy for your business. So a lot of work needs to be done. But a good news is that I am pretty sure, I am more than sure that in the case, if Ukraine is really ready, you will be invited. This is the first good news. And the second good news is that you are not allowed. We have a lot of experience, and we are more than willing to share this experience. By the way, this is why I am here, and I am not the last one. I am the first one. Then I will invite my dear colleagues from Lithuania, Kubilius, from Latvia, Dombrovskis, from Estonia, from the Czech Republic, from Poland, but also maybe from some older democracies for some specific issues from Sweden, Karl Bild, or from Germany, from the other countries to come to Kiev and to help. We all want a lot, but again and again, the homework must be done also in this country. Well, it's also the, the task of doing homework is aggravated by the fact that there is still a military conflict in Ukraine. Uh, and I was wondering, what do you think about the position of the current Slovak government on the uh, Ukrainian conflict? Sometimes in Ukraine, uh, the declarations of uh, the Minister Fico are viewed as quite pro-Russian and quite controversial. What do you think about this? And now we are entering on the thin ice. <laughs> uh, look, uh, this is not my mission, neither to interfere into your domestic issues, nor to criticize my successor. But being a little bit friendly, I would tell you that I'm not very happy because of the present foreign policy of my government. They do what is needed. I am very happy that at the end of the day, the reverse inflow of gas has been established after some difficulties. I am really not very happy because some uh, sentences or some speeches of my successor, the Prime Minister. But on the other side, I believe that we are strong enough in Slovakia and we are very united in Slovakia, not only in the opposition but also in civil society, to promote what is necessary towards Ukraine, to promote positive things. So maybe sometimes politicians are able to produce some statements for domestic issues, willing to be re-elected. So I can have a kind of understanding for such statements, even though I criticize it. But generally speaking, I believe that at the end of the day, Slovakia will beg Ukraine very strong. Yesterday, last night, 
before sleeping I read uh, the latest news from Slovakia and I read that uh, foreign minister uh, of Slovakia together with uh, his colleagues from Visegrad 4 uh, are coming to Kiev next week and his position is crystal clear that we are backing Ukraine we have full, un full understanding for your difficulties and we want to, uh, to help you so for me it was a, a good news but I don't like such type of politics that Prime Minister is a bad police, policeman and Foreign Minister is a good policeman or vice versa. So everybody, every country sometimes is facing some difficulties. In our case, I wouldn't take it too dramatically, even though I criticize these uh, statements trying to criticize Ukraine and uh, showing that uh, we do not understand what is happening in the East. We understand very well what is happening in the, uh, in the, East. In the East. You know, as I already mentioned, I am also not against Russia. I spoke to President Putin as Prime Minister several times. I argue that bringing Slovakia to the West, it doesn't mean that we are against Russia. But, Annexation is annexation. Aggression is aggression. There is no doubt about it. There is no doubt that Crimea is Ukraine land. There is no doubt that uh, Russia is responsible for what is happening in the East, is in Donetsk, in Luhansk, in Donbass. We should be crystally clear about that. And finally, uh, by the way, about Visegrad Group, do you think this organization is still viable? In Ukraine, many expected it, you know, to be such a, a union of Ukraine's friends, the Eastern and Central European countries who are uh, show solidarity with Ukraine and support Ukraine. But what we see, we see big differences inside this group. We see the position of Hungarian Prime Minister Orban, very controversial position, uh, in the same way, very Russian position of Czech President Zeman. In Slovakia, there are also some questions. So it seems for now that only Poland out of uh, Visegrad 4 is really Ukraine's ally. Do you think uh, this format, Visegrad format, can still play its role in Ukraine? Can it still show its solidarity with Ukraine? Well, you know, in every human life, there are some periods of the better and some periods of some difficulties or, or not so beautiful time. In the case of Visegrad, we are facing maybe not the crisis, but a special challenge, especially in the approach to, towards the crisis in Ukraine. That's true, but it is not so dramatic as it can uh, be uh, watched from, from Kiev. Speaking about my home, yes, Prime Minister sometimes is able to produce a not very positive statement, but the President of the Republic, Mr. Kiska, is fantastic there is no doubt about our policy so I believe that the major segment of society not only in Slovakia but even in uh, the Czech Republic even in Hungary is in favor of your transformation modernization and tendency towards the EU but I have to admit that uh, in these days I'm not very happy with the a level of political collaboration in the Visegrad 4. I am not very happy. We should be more united. At the beginning, we liked to speak at the level of prime ministers that we are not a political composition. We prefer to cooperate rather in the area of infrastructure, building bridges, highway connections, pipeline lines, and so on and so on. But I would prefer to do more in politics as such. Not maybe strictly coordin to, to coordinate policies, not to go against someone else, but to be just uh, more, more helpful and more useful. In case of Ukraine, if we are united, it would be much better also for uh, the other part of EU community, but also for Ukraine. Let's hope that uh, we will overcome this time of, uh, I would say, a sort of was it hesitation and we will, we will be united in the future, more united than we are now at the present time.